So the first question you asked is about the Portuguese girls. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Tabang, what we're going to do is just going to have a little bit of fun, right? Get okay. people to know you. You know, I want to hype you up. You know, let's just enjoy ourselves. It's not, we're not trying to get to the, any dirty secrets and stuff, right? No, no problem. So just have fun, man, you know? Yeah. And then what's your home, home language? My home language is Swana. Oh, okay. So if we throw in along the road, you know, we're South Africans, it's okay. All right, so, uh, Betway squad, what an honor. We've got a man who's been playing his football for the last seven years in Portugal, Tibang Pete. He's, uh, uh, well, a guy that you probably don't know enough about, but you should. They should know you, Tibang. We should know more about you. I mean, Portugal is the sixth highest ranked league in Europe. So that puts you like in the top 10 leagues in the world, and you've been there for a while. That must make you feel really good. Yeah, yeah, I mean it's a it's a great it's a great platform for me to be in Portugal, and like you said, it's one of the the best leagues in the in the in the world, and it's yeah. a very it's an honor to play in this league. So, let's go back though to home here in South Africa. Where are you from? Take us back to hometown and a little bit on your journey. I was I was born in 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 the Northern Cape. I think you you should know that in in Kimberley in a city called Kimberley, it's a very I love very, Kimberley. Yeah, it's a very small place. I was born there. I grew up there, and uh -huh. that's I started my 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 fantasy of football. Yeah. So, was someone in the family a footballer? Um, how did you get into the the game in Kimberley? It's not we don't know Kimberley to be where footballers from South Africa come from. To be honest, in my family, I'm the only one that 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 plays professionally football and that that play professionally. You know, I think mm -hmm. football is just uh, uh, something that I, I liked doing when I was a when I was a when I was a kid, and I grew up starting loving it, and that's when it started. So you pick up the game, yeah. You play through your grassroots football, then you go to Cape Town. It's quite a distance from Kimberley to Cape Town. How does that even happen? Uh, take us through your development days. No, at first I, I, I went to the South of Africa Academy with Farouk Khan. I <laughs> went when I was uh, 14 years old. And then I spent uh, around about five years at the Academy. Which and is where? Where's the Academy? South of Africa. Where Farouk. is it? In Johannesburg. So you leave Kimberley, you take the 600 kilometers from Kimberley, at yeah. 14? At 14, yes. And you moved to Johannesburg, leaving the family behind? Leaving the family behind, you know. But my family always, like? me, they always said I should go for my dreams and they were always behind me. So it wasn't a, a really of a problem for me. But you're 14, to leave everybody behind? I know, I know, but like from where I come from, like the opportunities are very less. So so I, I, had, to, I had to make a decision, you know. And even my family was supporting me that it's it's better I leave I leave uh, Kimberley because opportunities are very less, and, mm. and to better my life and to go to Johannesburg and and do what I love. So you spend your development stars of Africa, Farouk Khan. We know great coach. He works on you. Yeah. Um, you then do move to Cape Town. Yes, I, I I moved to Cape Town on a on a on a loan move from the academy. So I moved to, to Milano United. It was in the NFD. I think it was called mm -hmm. NFD. Mm -hmm. And I spent uh, uh, one season there and then I came to Europe after that. How does that even occur? I mean, you're now the boy from Kimberley, developed in Johannesburg, had a season in Grassy Park in Cape Town, now making his way to Portugal. How does that even happen? Well, the journey wasn't, wasn't, it wasn't easy, to be honest, it wasn't easy. Uh, the academy life wasn't easy. We have a lot of quality players and I had to just, I had to just fight for my way, you know, because I knew where I came from. I didn't want to go back to Kimberley and I wanted to better my, my, my life and my family's life. And I just had to make some sacrifices and, 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 and I was, I was lucky to be, to be coached by Farouk Khan. He groomed me and everything. And then that's when we, we spoke that, look, 
now it's time. I'm going to send you to, to Milan United. It's on a professional level. And let's see from there on how you, how you cope. And I took the opportunity. I went to Milano. Uh, I had a great season. I think we, we ended up in the playoffs. We ended up in the playoffs. And then after that, some teams locally were interested. But then I had a chat with Faru Khan and he said, no, it's better I take you to Europe. Mm. And yeah, it's better I take you to Europe. It's going to be a good platform for you. Portugal is a very good platform. It's going to be in the, in the third division, but it's okay. You're still young. You're going, to work your, you're going to work your way through and then we'll see from there. And you what? have. I mean, you have. You leave South Africa. You're 19. Yeah, I was 19 at the time. You get to Portugal, third division. You're now playing in the top division of Portuguese football. You've paid your dues. But I want to go back to your nickname. Kafu. I mean, did you even see him play? Nah, maybe a birthday and there, but honestly, I never, I didn't see him play like as in like follow him up and those things. But then the but, name came in, in the streets of Kimberley, like the older guys, I used to play with the older guys. And when I used to play, they would say, yeah, this is Kafu, this is Kafu. And that's when the name started, they started calling me Kafu. I mean, maybe arguably the greatest right back we've ever seen in the world. 142 caps for Brazil, two World Cups, uh, AC Milan superstar. That's Kafu. That is a big nickname to be carrying in football. Yes, I know, I know. I know he was a, he was a great player. But for me also, I think I, I, it dwelled well in me. It gave me confidence. It made me believe more in myself. Because to be honest, I didn't follow up Kafu. Then when uh, I started following up, okay, this is the guy, this is the guy. And this, this is how I, I start reasoning that maybe the people think I have the, the abilities to reach for. And that gave me confidence. And do they call you Kafu in Portugal? They call me Kafu at school, when I was in school, primary school, high school. They never used to call me with my, with my real name. Even the teachers at wow. school, Kafu, even Portugal now. So the, now, the name is with me now. And every second player in the league is from Brazil. So they know, they know Kafu. Yeah, and they always, they always ask me, look, are you from Brazil? I'm like, no. They say, no, is your Kafu with a K or C? I'm like, it's C. Where are you from? South African, like Kafu in South Africa. <laughs> Confusion. Yeah. So you're tall. How tall are you? How tall am I? 186, I think. That's goalkeeper height. Yeah, probably. Goalkeeper height. <laughs> so yeah. what is your preferred what's your preferred position? I mean, you, you can play anywhere. Uh in the middle, I mean, what is your position that you really enjoy playing? I wouldn't, I wouldn't choose one. Like at first, like I at academy, I started playing as a as a as a centre back. When I went, when I was at uh, South of Africa Academy, mm. I played centre back there, and then uh, Coach Farouk changed me into a defensive midfielder. And then I started playing there again. I came to Europe. I played as a defensive midfielder. Different coach, centre back, different coach, midfielder. So, for me, it depends on the coach. For me, I enjoy playing both positions, and I think I, I do great in both positions. And I don't have a problem in playing in, in both. What's your position currently at your club now? And this is where I need to admit something, eh? Koparu coach. How do we say the name of the club properly? Because we don't want to say it wrong and then embarrass ourselves around uh, Portuguese people. It's called Pelanensis. Pelanensis. Yes, Pelanensis. So, what's your position? What is the coach using you uh, as right now? For the past six games, I've been playing as a as a midfielder. But before the games, before I was I was playing as a centre back. So it depends on the coach. I just take the coach's instruction. Hey, today midfielder. Okay, I play today centre back. I play. Right? I just enjoy being in the field because at the end of the day, in modern football, you know, there's a lot of players who want to play, so I don't choose positions as long as I'm inside. Mm -hmm. I'm so let's talk a little bit about you and the player that you are, right? Um, Tibang, you've never scored in professional top division football. I've scored, I've scored, I've scored. How I looked and I didn't see any goals there. I've scored, I've scored one goal, I've scored one goal. One. 
Yeah. At the start How of the school. And where are the other where are the other goals? When are they coming? Ah, they will come, they will come. Soon they will come. You don't feel pressure for that? Sorry? You don't feel any pressure to get more goals? Not really, not really. I don't I don't I don't feel pressure to get goals. I mean I'm not a striker, so that's not something I should be worried about too much. Uh, yeah. And then this last year for you at uh, Belenenses, and even just before that, it's been a it's been a, a really up and down year for you, right? You've had a lot of things happening. For 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 the team particularly or, or, or the, just you the... as a person. I mean you signed, you got your contract with Belenenses after being on loan there, then COVID-19, you caught that, Bafana, Bafana, everything in this last year. Let's talk about this last year for you. Okay. No, this last year, I think when I came to, to, to Belenense, Belenense started opening like a, a, a better platform for me. I started playing a, a, a more games in the, in, the, in the first league because before I, I didn't like, I wasn't that, how can you call it, consistent in the first league. Mm -hmm. I would play 10 games in the first league and go back to the B team. But when I came to, to Belenians, I think I, I, they created that, you know, that consistency uh, in me. So I started playing more games, more games, improving, improving, people starting to, to remember me again because I was like the, the forgotten, you know. So I think Belenians revived the birth of my, my, my career in Portugal and, and I'm, I'm very grateful for them for doing that. And then with the, so with the with Bafana Bafana also, I think if I wasn't in Belenense, it was it was gonna be difficult for me to to be called also. Because what like what I said, because of the consistency, Belenense, I was consistent playing regularly, performing well, and that helped me a lot. When that call comes, the dream for every youngster in South Africa is to put on the Bafana Bafana jersey. How did that happen for you? Ish, ish, the call up, ish, to be to to be honest, I didn't expect that. And the, the coach Mulifi and Seki called me like directly. I didn't know the number, nothing. And he, he called me, it's like, hey, Mr. Tiba, I'm like, nah, I don't know this number. I don't know. At first I didn't want to even answer because I don't and I don't if if I don't have your number, I won't don't answer my call. <laughs> but luckily I answered and like, hey, who are you? He said, I'm, I'm Moli Finseki, the, the coach of the national team. And I didn't know what to say. I didn't know to say hello or... And I just kept quiet and he just spoke to me and said, no, we've been following you a lot and we've been happy with your performances. And I think it's time for you to, to come and represent the country. And, and I was very happy, man. I was very happy. I was excited. I was nervous. It was mixed emotions. I didn't know what wow. to tell family or just to relax until I reach South Africa and then I can I didn't know what to do but I was excited and happy so what did you eventually do did you call home or did you wait no I waited like two days for you to suck in like no that the guy really called me like okay now nah, let me call my family but at first I, I didn't mean, I just after you dropped I just I just pretended like oh it's normal call you know I just pretend like to be a normal call. And then <laughs> two days there, I started calling my family and started explaining everything. Yeah. Is it different for a footballer when he becomes an international capped footballer? Do you feel like different? Of course you feel different. Like when I first went to, to, to camp, okay, my first game at camp uh, in the national team, my first game, at first you don't, you don't, you don't feel it, you know? But then I start I started feeling it after, you know, with, with people sending messages. And that's now when you start recognizing that no, you're an international player. Like a lot of people now are sending you messages, South Africa, you that's when you start recognizing no, you international team and you international player. I'm the man. I'm the man. <laughs> yeah, you are recognized and you are representing your country. Yeah. And you're putting Kimberly on the map. Kimberly on the map, and it, it, was a, it was a big thing for me, even for Kimberly, my, my, my hometown, it was a very big thing. So you do well, you play that game against Namibia, the 1-1 one, one draw, then you're supposed to come back for the South Tome game, COVID-19. 
Yeah, COVID nineteen. There were there were there were rules that if if you if you had COVID, you should you should wait ten days and all those things until you can travel again. And that's why what happened with me. I had to wait, but I was I was okay. But I just I just couldn't travel. Mm. I had what COVID. was it like? What was your battle with COVID nineteen like? You you caught. COVID-19, what was that like? It, it, it was difficult like to, to, to be away from your, from your football friends and, and, and you're living alone in, in, in Portugal. You're gonna do quarantine alone. You can't do what you love. It was, it was difficult. And with the call up also, it was, it was very difficult because I, it was an opportunity to represent my, my country again. And, mm. It's, it's it's what we live in now, and I think we should be we should be expecting all these things in this time. And for you, as much as you've got that call up, that was a friendly game against Namibia. Yeah, it was a friendly, and the second one it was quali qualifiers. Yeah. yeah, so that had to hurt. It, it hurt, it hurt, it hurt. But then then again, I, I couldn't I couldn't I couldn't cry over it because. Because I mean, Belenense, okay, I'm not going there. We have to fight again to, to go back to the national team. I can't cry and, you know. Mm. Yeah. You've been called up. Yes, I've been called up again. Coach Molipi has called you up for Ghana and Sudan games. Yes, yes. What's the, what's the, what's the word at the club? Are you coming? COVID-19 restrictions? <laughs> uh, what's, what's it looking like? No, I mean... Uh, like Belenenses, they they are professional team. The 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 Safa, Safa talks to them directly, send a letter, and then they show the letter to me and they tell me, look, you have been called up to the national team. Congratulations, and and good luck. But the focus now we have still two games, so we're focusing on 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 these two games first, and then after they they open the door for me. So let's get that clear. Because, hey, there's other players around the world we're not sure about. When it comes to Tibang Pete, you are getting on the plane. You are coming to join Bafana Bafana for Ghana and Sudan. Mm -hmm. Sorry, can you repeat that again? I said you are confirming to us, right, that you will be joining Bafana Bafana for these next two qualifiers. Oh, yes, of course, of course. Of course, yeah. Ah, we want to hear it. I'm confirming it, of course, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay and then you know you have a South African teammate yeah does that make life easier for you at uh, Belenenses that uh, Usitola is there with you yeah it makes it much more easier uh, like he's a, he, he speaks the language and you know makes me also feel at home you know there's, there isn't that gap you know because uh, to, to, to be honest when you're alone and you don't have like people from even the language it makes a big difference like if i speak to him in my language i feel like okay no i'm, I'm close to home you know there's there's not a big gap like he's here we speak zulu and that it's it's comfortable for for me and him and yeah. then portuguese no father no nah, i speak i speak i speak portuguese i understand, I understand no i understand it but to 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 speak it it's it's a bit difficult but i i understand it a lot more better all I can say is obrigado. Yeah. Hey, that's it. Then. That's the end for me. <laughs> um, you know, staying with the South African thing in Portugal, there are a lot of South African players playing their football in Portugal. Is there, uh, like, remind us of who that is? And are you guys in contact? Are you a bit of a community? Oh, the, the guys I'm in contact with are the guys I played with at the academy. Like Luther Singh, Tabo Sele, uh, and then Sitole also. The other guys I, I know, I know they're here in Portugal. We meet there and there, but there are a lot, there are a lot of guys. There are even some players that I never met yet. Mm. You know? Yeah. But there are, there are a lot of players here in Portugal. I think Portugal is, is a good uh, a stepping stone for for players all over all over the world it's not only south african or african players but you get south american american players also i think portugal is a very good platform for for young players to to show the talent why do you think south africans know so little about you tiba 
I think, I think for me, for me, I think it's normal because at first I, I, I never, I never spent a lot of, like, uh, if we're talking of football, I've never played in a PSL or in the NFD for for a long time, you know. Mm. And then South Africa is a big country, you know, and and you go overseas, you go in the third list and all of that. And I think it's normal for people not to to record to recognize you. Because South Africa is a big country also, and they have also good leagues. PSL is a, is a good league. So, so for me, it's a, it's a normal thing. When you put on the Bafana jersey, like when you did it for Namibia and what's coming up with Ghana and, and Sudan, if you get uh, into the team, what do you want to prove to us? Is there something you want to show us? Is there is there an additional pressure on you to to show South Africans who you are? No, no. I when I when I walk into the field, I'm, I don't walk in to to show anybody anything. Because at the end of the day, I know my capabilities and I know what I give inside the field. But I'm not there to show anybody anything. I put on the jersey and I fight for the country. I give hundred percent, and 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 that's my job. It's it's fine. That's my job. I'm not there to show anybody anything. And what if you had to describe yourself? What kind of footballer are you? If someone has never seen you play, what would when you had to say, okay, this is what I'm going to go do on the field. This is how I play. What is that? What's that description? I would say I'm a player that uh, in, in inside of the, the the field of play, I I always wanna wanna reach my my you know my limits. I give everything. If if it has to be defending, I will defend. If I have to help to attack, I will attack. Like I would, I would do everything for the team. I'm, I'm just that player. I would do everything for the team. I, I don't style of play or what people call it. I was there. I had a small interview at at, at the camp. They said I'm, I'm a good passer of the ball. And I was like, nobody, nobody ever told me that I'm, I'm a good passer of the ball. But if people say that, it, for me, it's just opinions of people. But I know that I'm a fighter in the field. I give hundred percent, and I, and I do everything to help the team. That's the kind of player. What are your What are your dreams as a footballer? My my dreams as a footballer is to reach the the, the highest level uh, possible, the highest level in football possible. If it can be Champions League, it would be one of my my dreams to play in the Champions League, and again to 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 win silverware with with, with Bafana and to maintain my my position in Bafana. Well, you could. I mean, you got two games to get to an Africa Cup of Nations. Yeah, yeah, of course. You think about that? You think about going to Afcon? Yeah, I, I think about it. Yes, it's it's one of my it's one of my my, my my dreams also to play in Afcon. I mean, it's a it's a big it's a big tournament in Africa also. In Af- if I if we could represent South Africa in Afcon, and me being part of it, it will be it will be a dream come true true for me. We hope so, because we really want Bafana Bafana to qualify for the Africa Cup of Nations. <laughs> we want it. We'll be watching the game against Ghana. I know it's going to be live on television here, so South Africans are going to see you again, and hopefully you get out onto the field. But Tibang, um, what I want to know is, you know, you've had some difficulties. Like, you had the knee injury, right? Mm-hmm. How long were you out? And... How big an effect did it have on your uh, on your progress? Uh, the the first injury was 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 my knee injury, and that happened, I think my my second season in in Kimaranj. And then after that, that wasn't a, a, a very bad injury. Mm-hmm. And the bad one was the was my ankle injury where I had to do the surgery. I think that affected the whole, you know. Because at that time I was still young, you know, and when that when that happened, I thought, no, I'm young, you know, I'm gonna come back stronger. But then again, in Europe, there's there's no time for there's no time. You know, players come, players come and go, come and go, come and go, and then when you out, like people move on. There's no there's no time for for anybody to relax in Portugal, whether get injured or or whatever you may call it, but. I think the injury it 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 take me a, a, a step back in my in my in my career. How long and were I, you out? I was out for six months. I was out for six months. But then again, that six, 
that six months in Portugal, the, the six months it it can change it can change your life in Portugal. Only six months in your life. And then I had to go to go back and fight back all my way all back up and then until today where I am. But it wasn't it wasn't easy. It wasn't easy. It wasn't easy at all. I look at you now and you you look like somebody who it still stresses you out when you think about it. Yeah, it, it's still, and I always, I always speak about this, speak about it to, to like the, the younger players, like Sitole and them, like, you're still young, take this opportunity now because you're in a, you're in a great platform, Portugal is a very good, great platform, take care of your body, be professional in whatever you do, just to, to, to grab this opportunity, don't let it slip, because I wouldn't say it was a, it was a, how can I say, I made a mistake or something like that. For me, maybe everybody have their, their paths. For me, I learned, and I, if I have to pass it on to you, I, I will do that. Yeah. I want to go back to looking at the last year a little bit quickly, right? There were two things that I, that caught my eye. First of all, red card, Tivang. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was, actually, that was my first red card professionally. I've never caught a red card. Ever. That was back in December against Maratimo. Yeah. But okay, who gets a red card in the 98th minute? I think it was the game. It was the game. It was the game. The way they scored. Firstly, the way the way they scored, and I wasn't I wasn't happy how they scored, and I was I was just frustrated, man. I I, I didn't do it intentionally, but it just it just happened, you know. We didn't see the visuals. What did you do? No, I I I, I tramped on, on on the players. Unali tempa boy, unali tempa. Yeah, I stepped on his on his on his private uh, on his private part, but it wasn't it wasn't <laughs> no no <laughs> it wasn't it wasn't it was just it was just a, a, a tempo. <laughs> <laughs> just it. on the main switch. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So straight red, straight red card. Yeah, it was a straight red card and, and, a, and a three match ban. But I, I apologized. I apologized to the player, and I explained to him, "Look, I was frustrated, and I'm, and I'm very sorry." Yeah. I now won't forgive you. Ah, you stand there. <laughs> ah. <laughs> but okay, you've dealt with it. You've moved on from it. There was also. The own goal, that must have also been a difficult thing to go through as a defender. Own goal, uh, which came on? Back in June against Pacos. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. the own goal. Yeah, yeah. You blanked it out of your mind already, God. Yeah, it was a part that I couldn't do nothing about the, the own goal. Yeah. But I heard it was that it was the winning goal for them in the last minute. That, that was painful. Yeah. So... These things, you put them behind you. I can see that. You're somebody who doesn't stay, stay with these memories and these things. You straight away put it behind you, carry on. No, of course, of course, I have to carry on. Because I've learned, I've, I've learned a lot of things in, in, in Portugal or in football. Like you can't, you can't, you can't want to look back and, and be sad of things that happened yesterday if you have a day in front, a whole 24 hours in front of you. I think mm. I focus on what I can do in this 24 hours and, you know, and things can change. You can do own goal. You can do, uh, make an own goal yesterday and today. You scored three goals, and then and then everybody forgets about it. So I'd rather uh, concentrate on the future than on on what happened in the past. Okay. So as we wrap things up, seven years in Portugal, top league in the world. If you had to share advice to youngsters coming up here in South Africa. What is that one piece of advice, that thing that you're going to tell them, this is what you need if you're going to try and make it in the world of football? At first, I would tell them that you need to sacrifice. But sacrifice is not only, it's not only how you can call it. No, I have to, I have to work hard and do, I mean, sacrifice it has to do with being professional. That's a sacrifice, being professional. Because you know, not many players can be, can be professional, you know. You need to sleep, eat, and train also good. And, 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 and most importantly, you have to believe. 
Because if you don't believe in yourself, uh, nobody will, will believe in you. And another thing, it, it won't be easy. You have to, you just have to uh, accept that it won't be easy. Mm. That nothing is going to come easy away. And you have to be, you have to be ready for that. And that's the only way you can, you can, you know, you can, you can fight it out. If you know that it's not going to be easy. Tell me, just you and me now, yeah. Those, those euros, man. Are you making like that? That real? That that, that real money? <laughs> <laughs> nah, I'm not making the the real euros. But I'm happy. I'm happy with. I'm happy. I'm happy. What park? What's <laughs> parked? What's parked? What's parked in the uh, Belenenses parking lot there? <laughs> no, no, no. Nothing is parked there. What do you mean? You don't ride in. No, no, I'm happy. I'm happy with my life. I'm happy in Belenense. I'm happy with the Euros I'm getting. And and so what car do you drive? <laughs> no, I don't drive. I don't drive. At all? No, I don't drive. No, at all. You've been there for seven years. I don't drive. Ah, young shy shy. Ah, young shy shy. And I'm gonna find out. <laughs> <laughs> that means, and I'm going to tell. That means there's like an airplane in the. And he doesn't doesn't want to say. He arrives. In, no, no, nothing like that. No. Okay, honest though, you do have a car, right? I don't have a car, honestly. Really? Okay. Is that part of your discipline? No, I wouldn't say that. It's no, it's, it doesn't. It's nothing. It doesn't have to do with um, discipline or something like that. I just don't. Footballers and cars, it's like, it's like air and, and, and life. Yeah, I know, but I, yeah, in Portugal, I decided now I'm, I'm okay like this. I don't, I don't need a car. I don't need a car. Pedestrian. Hola. Pedestrian. Tabang, <laughs> Tibang, <laughs> <laughs> uh, we look forward to it, man. Uh, looking forward to seeing you down here. Um, Anything you want to say to the about about the club, Belenenses? Um, you know your contract is until twenty twenty two. What do you want to say to the fans who might pick up this video online as well? But firstly, I want to I want to thank you for having me here. And yet again, uh, I'm happy in in Belenense. Uh, I still have a contract here, and I'm happy with them. I'm enjoying my football here, and and. And I'm looking forward to 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 being in camp with with, the, with my Bafana teammates and help the country. Will you guys avoid relegation? Because that's that's here. Yeah, that's starting to look. You know, you're right at the border between where you could have a great season or you could be dragged into the relegation battle. Yeah, actually, actually, the uh, this season, oh, the, it's like nine teams. Like it's, it's it's a very it's a very difficult season and very dramatic. Because all the teams are very close. If you win one game, you move up. If you win one, you go down. This this season, I've never seen a season like this in Portugal. But this season is very, is very competitive, and every point is going to count until the end. When the dust settles, which side will uh, Tibang Pete be on? When the? the relegation side of things, or another season in top division? Oh, of course, we're fighting to be in, in the top position and. That's 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 that. We're fighting for that. We love that you are a fighter, and thanks for flying the flag for us in South uh, the South African flag for us in Portugal. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, Thomas. All right. Thanks a lot for your time, man. Thank you, man.